Hello children. Hope finds you in the best of your health and safety. Today we are going to learn about auxiliary verbs. So firstly, let's understand what are auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs are the verbs that are used together with the main verb of the sentence to express the action or state. Main verb plus auxiliary verb gives you the complete idea. So this means with the help of auxiliary verbs we give the complete idea to our sentence. The main auxiliary verbs are be, am, is, are, was, were, did, has, have, had. But they all don't have any meaning. So now let's move ahead. Now the general meaning of the word auxiliary is to help. So that's why the auxiliary verbs are also called the helping verbs. They don't have any meaning of their own. They are necessary for the grammatical structure of a sentence. But they do not tell us very much alone. So children as we have learned before that the auxiliary verbs help the main verb to give the complete idea. And therefore they are called the helping verbs. And in order to make a complete sentence they are very important in the sentence. We usually use helping verbs with the main verbs. They help the main verb which has a real meaning and which makes it called a helping verb also. Let's move ahead. Again it is stating the same to recapitulate that a helping verb works together with the main verb. Let's look at the examples. She is leaving. Now here leaving is the main verb and is is the helping verb. If I avoid use of is, if I hide it, what is the sentence? She leaving. No sentence, right? Because the complete idea is not there. But with the help of the auxiliary verb is, she is leaving, the complete idea is there and it becomes a complete sentence. Similarly, if I have the sentence, I have finished my work, right? To give the complete idea, I have to use the verb that is the auxiliary verb have with the main verb finished to get the complete idea of the sentence. I hope you all must have understood this. Now, let's look at the use of is, am and are. Is, am, are are used to express the present tense, present continuous tense. So, am is used with the subject I. Is is used with the subject he, she, it or any singular. And are is used with the subject you, we, they or any plural. Let's look at the examples. Am. I am sorry for what I have done. I am. Is. He is a great all-round player. He is. Are. You are never too old to learn. You are. So, with the subjects like I, we use am, he, we use is and you, we use are. I hope you all must have understood this. Let's move ahead and look at the use of was or were. These two are used to express the past continuous tense. And was is used with the singulars and the subjects like I, he, she or it. And were is used with the plural subjects and the subjects like you, we or they. Let's look at the examples. Was. He was elected by unanimous vote. Were is used with the plural. So the children were playing with the ball. I hope this must be clear to you. Let's move ahead and look at the use of will or shall. Now, this is very important to understand that shall is the auxiliary verb which is only and only used with I and we. Either you can use it with we or with the subject I. And will is used with all the subjects, may it be singular, plural, he, she, it, you, we, they. With all of them, the will is used and these two are used to express the 
future tense now let's look at the use of has or have has is used with he she or it that means all the singular subjects use the auxiliary verb has and i you we you they they all use the auxiliary verb have and all the plurals also use the auxiliary verb have these are used in the present perfect tense now let's move ahead and look at the use of had had is used to express the past perfect tense and no matter what subject is singular or plural i you we they he she or it had is used with all the subjects in the past perfect tense i hope you all must have understood this so let's look at the examples he has bought some tropical fruits he has and the third form of the verb bought is also there right have our guests have arrived arrived is also the third form of the verb so have is there i had not seen him for 15 years i had not seen we are talking about the past perfect tense so with i i have used had and seen is telling me that it is a perfect tense now let's look at the use of do or does these are the very important auxiliary verbs as they help you when the common auxiliary verbs are also not there and they help you to convert a sentence into negative and interrogative sentences right so do and does are playing the most important role as the auxiliary verb let's see which subjects take these two verbs i we you they and the plurals take the auxiliary verb do and all the singulars he she and it take the auxiliary verb does in the present tense they both express the present tense moving ahead to use of did did is used to express the past tense when your auxiliary verb the common auxiliary verb is also not there and irrespective of singular or plural they are used with all the subjects may it be i you we they he she it singular or plural now let's look at the examples do i do not feel like going out tonight i do not feel right present tense and no common auxiliary verb is there does your job fulfill your expectations in the first sentence here it is the negative and here it's interrogative as i told you that these auxiliary verbs help you to convert the sentences into negative and interrogative so does your job fulfill your expectations does your job fulfill this is in the present tense and it is asking a question where the common auxiliary verb is missing then is your did did you have a nice holiday here again it is a past tense common auxiliary verb is not there and it is an interrogative sentence i hope you all must have understood the common auxiliary verbs and do did and does and their uses thank you